of the truth of the knowledge of God, which he has made plain to you, shown to you, and that you even clearly understand. But because of your suppression of the truth of the knowledge of God, in your unrighteousness, in your wickedness of unbelief, the wrath of God is being revealed against all such because of your sinful nature in which you are conceived and born and in which you live and express and practice that nature in the lawlessness that abounds amongst you. So I bid you for yourself take a copy of God's Word home with you and see. See for yourself what the Almighty would say to you through His Word today. The Bible tells us Jesus, the Deliverer from the wrath to come, the wrath of God, of course, which is being revealed amongst you. Jesus 
and he alone delivers us from wrath, the holy displeasure that is of God. Tells you, you see, of the perilous state and condition that you are in, conceived in and born in and walk and live in and will do all your days until you breathe your last, unless that is by Jesus, you are delivered from the wrath of God, the infliction of divine displeasure that is, that of course excludes you from the kingdom of God. Why Jesus bids you repent and believe the gospel, he said. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. And because of your unrighteous state and condition in which you are conceived and born, you're excluded from the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom of his grace, his love, and his power. You are devoid, you see, of all such goodness that God would bestow upon you. Because of your state, you see, your dangerous, perilous state under the revealed wrath of God. How, uh, you see, is the wrath of God being revealed amongst us? Well, just listen to what comes out of the mouth of your fellow human being. Look at the behavior of men and women around you in your society. That, you see, is what God, the Almighty, in His displeasure, has given you over to, abandoning you, you see, to the power of self. You say you don't believe in God. You say you don't believe there is a God. You say that you want your sin. So God says, okay, I'll give you what you want. I'll open the door. You don't want my love. You don't want my power. You don't want my kingdom. You don't want my blessings. I'll give you over to another power. I'll give you over to the power of self. The worst thing that can befall, I tell you, any human being on this planet is that God should give you over to the power of yourself. That is to what you want. And that is exactly what God has done, giving you over in his displeasure, his divine wrath, giving you over to the power of self, to do those things, you see, that ought not to be done by human beings the sexual perversion of which I spoke a moment or two of ago. You see, the slaughter of unborn infants, where does that come from? Slaughtered on the altar of your sexual pleasure. That, you see, that is the wrath of God being revealed amongst you. All these things, of course, and much, much more. The misery and the depression, I'm told that at present one in four people in this nation, that's one quarter of the nation, are suffering from clinical depression. Well, the Bible doesn't use the word depression, but it does use the word misery. And the misery comes, you see, as a result of not being right with God. It comes as a result of sin, but of course, you know this, don't you? Because you have the saying amongst you, he's as miserable as sin. Because you know that sin makes you miserable. All you think. You think when you're indulging, 
that it will bring you happiness, but it doesn't. It brings you nothing but misery. You want to be happy, you want to be truly happy, then you must be obey God. You must repent and believe the gospel. You must turn from your wicked, sinful ways that bring the wrath of God upon you and keep you in this perilous state in which you are today. If you are not delivered, be assured the day is coming when the wrath of God will fall upon you fully and finally, and you shall be turned into hell where the wrath of God shall be upon you forever and ever, for all eternity. Immediately, that is, the moment that you die, that you breathe your last, you see, the wrath of God in all its intensity and fierceness shall fall upon you. It is appointed, you see, for man to die once, the Bible says. Or you say, oh well, then, then all our misery will be over. Then it will all come to an end. Because we don't know what happens when a person dies. When you're dead, you're dead, you see. That's the philosophy, of course, of unbelief, of wickedness, of rebellion. Because the truth is that we do know exactly what happens following death. Oh, but you see, no one ever returned to tell us what happened. Yes, Jesus Christ did. And he tells us in his word plainly and clearly. It is appointed for man to die once. After this comes the judgment. Then, my friends, the wrath of God which is already upon you because of your ungodliness and unrighteousness will fall upon you immediately you die in all its intensity and in all its fierceness and that's forever. Oh, you say, things are bad enough now. My misery, my life is bad enough now. Some of you would say, well, I'm in hell now. No, my friends, you do not understand. You need to read the Bible and you need to read what Jesus the one who would deliver you from the wrath of God, what he has to say about hell. And believe me, oh, you have tasted nothing yet, but you will do. That is, if you do not repent and believe the gospel. Oh, you've seen nothing yet. You know nothing of what the word suffering means yet. No matter how bad it might be for you, in this life. The reason why Jesus has been revealed as the deliverer is that you might be delivered from the wrath of God, which is the cause of your misery, which is the cause of your unhappiness, which is the cause, you see, of your separation, your exclusion from the kingdom of God. Jesus has been revealed in the word of God, in the Bible, as the mighty deliverer, the one who can deliver you from the wrath of God already upon you. But then, of course, the wrath of God when it is inflicted upon you, will be inflicted upon you proportionally, you know, according to the amount of mercy that you have perverted. You see, you live in a nation in which these things are not foreign to you. Oh, dear. oh you, yes, oh dear. It will be oh dear for you, madam don't repent and believe the gospel. 
it will be our dear. It will be more than our dear. The shattering of eternal flame and the unquenchable fire where the worm dies not. No, there's something to be saved from the wrath of God through the mighty Deliverer, even Jesus, revealed for this purpose. But how long have you been perverting the mercy of God, living in God's world, breathing His air, drinking His water, walking upon His earth, and at the same time, living in a life of debauchery, degeneracy, uncleanness and filth, and thinking that because God is merciful, that you shall escape the wrath to come. Well, I assure you, the wrath of God shall be inflicted upon you according to the proportion in which you have perverted the mercy of God. And then, of course, according to the privileges that you have abused. The hearing of the gospel on many occasions. The Bibles that fill your land. The preaching of the gospel that you still have amongst you. But the wrath of God, you see, will be inflicted upon you according to the measure in which you have abused the privilege of the gospel preaching that you have enjoyed. You reject it, you despise the Son of God, and God will equally despise you on that day. Those privileges given to you, a land that abounds with Bibles and Gospel preaching where other nations have never heard the truth. They too will be judged likewise, but you even more. You even more because of your privileges and because of the foolishness that abounds amongst you. In just the same fashion, God will treat you. And then, of course, as much as you have neglected the gospel, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The Bible poses the question, and the answer is logical. It's not answered. You will not escape if you neglect the gospel that's presented to you here even this very afternoon. So you see, the infliction of God's wrath will be in proportion to the amount by which you have neglected His Word, His truth, His Gospel, His Son, His love, in accordance with the light that you've possessed and the sins, of course, that you have committed. The more you sin, well, the more you treasure up wrath, you see. For the day of wrath is God. The wages of sin is death, you see. And so you're storing up all the time. You're storing up the wages are mounting up and God will faithfully pay you your wages in that day. His wrath will be poured out upon you in proportion to the amount of sinning that you have done. And so I commend to you Jesus who delivers us from the wrath of God. It's why he came. It's why he lived and loved. It's why he died and rose again from the dead. Because God so loved the world, a world of ruined sinners, that he sent Jesus to deliver us from that coming wrath of God, that through the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Son of God, He paying the ransom, He paying the price for your sin, you see, that you might walk away free by trusting, that is, 
in Jesus and what he has done. Today I must impress upon you that the wrath of God you see, when it comes upon you, believe me, it is eternal. The Bible, Jesus tells us the loving Savior. He tells us there is an impassable gulf between you, you see, and the righteous between those in heaven. And there's no way back, you see. Once you've fallen out of this world in your sin, under the wrath of God, that's your state, that's your condition for all eternity. There are no second chances. There's no such a place as purgatory mentioned in all the Bible. That's just a fantastic dream of the Roman Catholic Church to get more money out of its subscribers. There is no such a place as God. It's heaven or hell. It's the wrath of God or the pleasure of God. Which will it be? But when you've fallen out of this world, in your sin, in your natural state and condition, believe me, there is no repair then. Now is the day of God's salvation. Now is the time when you must get right with God, when you must repent and believe the gospel. The fire, Jesus tells us, is unquenchable. The worm that does not die, a gnawing conscience that will burn in you for all eternity. Now, in your state of sin and unbelief, dear friends, one day you will be exposed to that hell. Condemned heirs, inheritors of nothing but the wrath of God. That's the state and condition that you're in by your natural birth, being born in sin and living in sin and dying in sin. Unless that is Jesus who delivers us from the wrath of God, delivers you from your sin. But that's what he came for. And that's the measure and that's the evidence of God's love in sending his son into the world to die for the ungodly, to die for those who are contrary to God, you see, in their nature and in their practice. It was for such Jesus died. This is the gospel. Christ died for the ungodly, for people like you, that you might escape the wrath to come. Free, you see, from the, the sentence of condemnation and justified freely, made right with God by his grace. The grace of God, you see, is the free favor of God, that which you cannot be religious for, which you cannot earn, which you cannot do or be anything for. It is simply and only given to you, the free gift of God. And God gives it to whoever he pleases to give it to. Not everybody, not everybody, but some. Delivered from the sentence of God's displeasure, his holy wrath justified and made right by the grace, the free gift of God. For those, that is, who believe the gospel, who trust in Jesus, in the Son of God. And not all believe, and not all men have faith. But for those who will believe, they will be justified. They will be made right with God. And the wrath of God, they will be delivered from the Bible 
assures us from the due penalty that is due to you as a result of your sin and your unbelief. Made a new creature in Jesus Christ. Born again, as Jesus puts it, for you see, a man must be born again before he can even understand the kingdom of God. Never mind, enter into it. You must, you must, says Jesus, you must be born again. Unless God enlightens your mind, and get, unless God removes the ignorance, unless God takes away the darkness, unless God circumcises your heart, unless you're born again, not of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God, something God does, not you, not you, but God who shows mercy. But unless you're born again, the day will come when you will wish you had never been born at all. But then, of course, it is only when a man or woman is born again that they are and can be accepted by God. Because until you are made a new creature in Jesus Christ, you remain unacceptable to God. And the wrath of God remains upon you. Well, you see, if it is God who does it, and according to his will and pleasure, then you say, what can I do? Well, you could ask, you could call, you could seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near, while you yet have the breath of life in you. May I suggest that you do so, that you call, and that you cry to him and give him no rest until he comes to you and pardons you until you know that you have been born again by the Spirit of God and accepted by God. Before that is, the full final wrath of God falls upon you set free from the terror, the terror of death that holds many, many people, of course, in bondage. All their lives long, the fear of death, oh, very brave, very brave, full of bravado, when you're young and fit and strong, but let the king of terrors come near you, they approach you, no longer, no longer are you brave and courageous in his face. And death, believe me, is no respecter of age. It's no respecter of persons. It comes to the young and the old alike. And death may come stealing to you very soon. Who knows? Maybe even this very day. And you're taken out of this world into the presence of a sin-hating and holy God. That terror of death and hell and of the wrath of God you can be delivered from. But only by Jesus. There's no other deliverer. You cannot be delivered by your religious activity or you can be oh so devoted to your religion any one of your world religions that you care to name but there's not an ounce of deliverance salvation in any one of them outside of the gospel of god's son jesus christ there is no deliverance from the wrath to come. Only Jesus, only Jesus, He alone can deliver you from the wrath of God, remove the terror from you, and give you peace with God 
and the peace of God filling your heart and mind, giving you that joy in place of the misery caused by your sin, the joy that no one can take away from you. And the hope, of course, without which causes many people to despair. And of course, in your day and generation, there are many such who take their own lives, commit suicide in abundance. The figures have never been so high. Why? Because men live without hope in this world and the world to come. But Jesus could deliver you from such hopelessness and from the wrath of God and bring you peace and joy and hope, everlasting hope and peace and joy through trusting, believing in Jesus, the Son of God and the one who delivers from the wrath of God and delivered from all possibility of the inflicted wrath of God and brought into God's love and God's favor accepted in Jesus Christ accepted in the beloved the beloved Son of God you see who did his Father's will who did everything that pleased his Father who came and lived and loved and died at the Father's behest who did all that so that you might be delivered so that you might be accepted that you might know the favor of God as opposed that is to the wrath and displeasure of God the precious deliverer Jesus there is no other I am the way, the truth, and the life, he says. No man comes to the Father but by me. No man gets right with God, that is. No one gets God's favor, that is, without me. Neither is there salvation in any other name. Under heaven, under the whole canopy of heaven, whereby a person can be saved. Only Jesus, only Jesus, the one who delivers from the wrath of God, the divinely appointed Savior. You shall call his name Jesus. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins, from your greatest and known danger, that of your rebellious heart, that of your filthy, poisoned, diseased, and deceitful heart that is desperately wicked. Jesus, appointed by God himself to come and live and die and arise from the dead that you might be saved, that you might be delivered from such a heart condition that causes the wrath of God to be upon you and to be upon you constantly through the entirety of your life, right to the very end, unless you are delivered from it by Jesus, the divinely appointed Savior. And Jesus delivered by his merit not yours. I mean, what could you offer to God? What do you have that would be acceptable to God? What kind of offering could you make, do you think, that would be acceptable to God? Here you are, nothing but a lump of walking, breathing, talking sin. That's all that you are. Everything and anything that you have that has any goodness at all about it is not yours but from God. Okay. Only thing that you can call your own is your sin. And so therefore you have nothing 
nothing that you can offer to God by way of sacrifice. Only through the merits, only through the work of Jesus, His dying and His rising from the dead, His work alone, trusting in what someone else has done, trusting in someone else's righteousness, not yours because God says yours is like filthy rags in his sight, like a menstrual cloth. That's what he said. Untouchable. Untouchable. So friend, your righteousness will not pass your muster on the day of judgment. You need the righteousness of another. You need the righteousness of God revealed from heaven, revealed in the gospel, revealed in the good news concerning God's Son, Jesus Christ. He is the righteousness of God. And without Him, and without His righteousness, you cannot, you cannot escape the wrath to come. You cannot escape the judgment of God. You cannot be delivered from the wrath of God. Only Jesus, by His merit, can deliver you from the wrath of God. By His word of salvation, His word, the gospel, the good news, it's the power of God unto salvation. Not for all who are religious, not for all who perceive themselves to be, imagine themselves to be good person, but for all who believe, those who trust in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. The gospel is the power, word of God is His power for salvation to all who believe it. Delivered by Jesus, effectively by His Spirit, who alone can enlighten you and convince you of the reality of these matters. The reality of your sin, its obnoxiousness, its repugnance to God, its hatred of it, that you're defiled, deceived, unrighteous, ungodly to a man, to a woman. Only He, the Spirit of Christ, can enlighten you to such convince you of the needed righteousness of God revealed in the gospel and the good news about Jesus Christ I convince you of the judgment to come and I cannot give you one anxious thought about your sin or anything else I'm not here to frighten you simply tell you the truth as it is in Jesus in the word of God Jesus delivers us from the wrath of God, the judgment of God to come. And He, and He alone, judging one day, Jesus, that same deliverer, will judge you in righteousness. By the man Christ Jesus, you will be judged. He has been appointed, and He has been appointed to be the judge in that day. So if He's not your deliverer, rest assured, He will be your judge. I bid you, go to Him, cry out to Him, because Jesus alone can deliver you personally and eternally. It's a personal matter, and Jesus needs to deliver you personally, individually. Get right with God. Repent and believe the gospel. Those are the words of the deliverer. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man is not. And let him return to the Lord. He will show mercy and abundantly pardon. 
those that is, whom he delivered. God assures you in his word that he's a reward to the Lord who diligently seek after him. So be warned, you who sin in carelessness, who go through this world thinking that you can live in lawlessness, thinking that you can live with impunity in sin, I warn you, flee from the wrath to come. The threat of wrath is not just a threat. It's already upon you. It's already all over you like a rash. It's only because you're blinded by your sin and unbelief that you cannot see it. But one day, your eyes will be open to it. I pray not too late. I pray before the intensity and fierceness of wrath falls upon you finally and fully. That even today God would enlighten you, remove the veil, and enable you to see, to behold the Son of God, the Deliverer, mighty Deliverer from heaven, able to save you from the wrath. I implore you, in all seriousness, be reconciled to God. Consider your state now. Flee from the wrath to come into the arms of the only deliverer, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, revealed from heaven, who came down from his throne above, who became a man and lived a perfect, blameless life, and arose again. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. While you yet have the breath of life in you, while you still walk God's air, while you still enjoy some measure of His goodness, turn, flee from the wrath to come, hearken to and obey the command of the King Himself. Repent the first recorded words of Jesus in the New Testament. Repent and believe the gospel. Why? Because the kingdom of God's at hand. And the only way you can enter it is in the way of repentance and faith towards the Son of God, the mighty deliverer from heaven, even Jesus, the Savior of sinners. Repent, he said. Repent, he commands you. Repent, says the King of Kings. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. They'd like to have the copy of God's word. Come and ask for one gladly give you one. Call in the name of the Lord and be saved. May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, precious souls.